All right, folks, breaking news. Kamala Harris finally gave her speech conceding the 2024 election to Donald Trump. We'll tell you about it in a second. But first, folks, I want to thank everyone who joined us on our election stream last night. I believe that did the biggest numbers in the history of this channel. And by the way, if you're new right now, do us a big favor because the work is just beginning. We got a long and very fun four years ahead. So do us a favor. Make sure you tuned in. Make sure you're subscribed subscribed because we are just getting started here and we're, we're celebrating for four years straight okay but yeah so Kamala Harris has finally conceded the election and honestly I'm a little bit surprised that she even did it because I think there was a strong chance that Democrats would have never actually admitted that they lost despite all of the rhetoric about how oh you need to accept the results of the election but my honest prediction is that this is basically just performative and then a couple months from now as we saw back in 2016 they're immediately going to blame some other reason for why they lost you know right now they're busy blaming the voters which is not good politics but at least that legitimately says okay the election did actually go a certain way, but I'm sure Russia, 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 or may, who knows, maybe there's another foreign country. I don't know. Maybe they'll say Uganda tried to steal the election for Donald Trump. That is coming very, very soon. But first, here was the concession speech where she actually admitted it at the very least. I'm experiencing a range of emotions right now. I get it. <laughs> but we must accept the results of this election. Earlier today, I spoke with President-elect. For now, by the way, for now, okay? Like I said, I, 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 come January 20th, there's going to be a new excuse, okay? They're going to find something. In fact, I already saw some Democrats on the timeline saying because there was such a huge drop-off in their popular vote from 2020 that somehow this time around it must have been stolen. The irony in that, right? The irony in that, it's just, it's coming, it's coming. But for now, hey, they're going to give us a peaceful transfer of power. We think, we think, okay, we don't know, right? What's going to happen on January 6th when Kamala Harris actually has to certify the results? I think they dug themselves into a hole because they talk so much about this peaceful transfer of power thing for the past four years. They can't just walk back from it now. But she still never know, okay? I don't know, Let, let's see. Trump and congratulated him on his victory. I also told him that we will help him and his team with their transition, and that we will engage in a peaceful transfer of power. <laughs> a fundamental principle of American democracy is that when we lose an election, we accept the results. That principle, as much as any other, distinguishes democracy from monarchy or tyranny. And anyone who seeks the public trust must honor it. At the same time, in our nation, we owe loyalty not to a president or a party, but to the Constitution of the United States. Again, I mean, let's ask ourselves the question. If it were truly a close election, which it was not, by the way, and that's the important thing to keep in mind. Donald Trump is on track right now. It looks like he's going to sweep all seven battleground states. Democrats came very close you know, to losing in states like Virginia and New Jersey, even New York, a big underperformance from Joe Biden in 2020. Imagine if this was a razor thin election where Trump very narrowly won, like flip maybe Pennsylvania, but not Michigan and Wisconsin, like one of those scenarios. Do you think they would be doing this? No, that's part of the issue, too. Why maybe they, they know there's nothing they can do, because if it were close I did not like Donald Trump's chances of actually being able to assume the presidency because you knew what they were going to do. But Trump and Republicans overall received a mandate last night. And that's why part of why I think they're having a hard time arguing against it. But Kamala Harris does say, while I'm conceding the election, I'm not conceding the fight. That's paraphrased there. What exactly does that mean? I'll tell you what that means. Russia, 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 right? They're going to do something, uh, maybe try to impeach him. I have no idea. But look, we'll worry about that tomorrow. The one thing I will say is that the way in which Kamala handled this whole concession speech situation, those of you who were with us on our live last night know all about it. 
really summarizes why she didn't win in the first place, which is that she has no care or regard for the actual people. OK, because if you, if you don't know what happened here, you weren't paying attention to Kamala HQ. So last night she attracts this big crowd to her watch party at Howard University. It must have been probably close to 10,000 people like it was a lot. It's D.C. That's not surprising. HBCU. But she has all these people sitting here waiting for her to come out and speak and, you know, talk about the election or whatever. And what does she do? Literally before the race was called, but it just wasn't looking all that good for her. She has her crony go on stage and declare that she's not going to be speaking. Take a listen. Has spoken, so you won't hear from the vice president tonight, but you will hear from her tomorrow. She will be back. Has spoken. So she did the Hillary Clinton thing, you know, back in uh, back in 2016, although I think Hillary did eventually come out. I don't remember the entire scenario there where like she's mad that she lost she can't handle it so she's just gonna not show up right I'm, I'm bitter i'm seething i'm locked away i'm not gonna go out and talk except it's like okay think what you will of kamala harris supporters okay like you know whatever but these people did go out to see you and support you and you have no respect for their time they stood there all night waiting watching the election results waiting to hear from you they were very enthusiastic about you. I strongly disagree with them as an American, but they were there for you. And how do you treat them? What kind of respect does Kamala Harris have for her own voters and their time? Oh, sorry, she's not going to speak tonight. If you want to come back tomorrow, you know, you can. People have things to do, right? Again, if they're all coming up, you can't at least give them a short speech. You can't at least come out there and face them and see them and talk to them and tell them the truth. Again, that just summarizes why she lost this election, because she had no regard for the people themselves. OK, all, what was the accusation the whole time? She's a, a, a normal politician. She's just typical, you know, political nonsense, establishment, corrupt, crooked, not for the people. You just proved it right there. Right. The, the way you handle that entire situation. And look, I get it. Right. It sucks. Nobody wants to be giving the concession speech where they're the loser. But uh, I think you at least owed it to the people last night. OK, you don't think you do? Well, th that's exactly why they didn't vote for you, right? Because this was an entitled campaign. They thought they already were going to win and they didn't really need to earn the votes of the people even on their own side that maybe we're not sure. OK, so you wonder why popular vote for the Democrats overall, just their turnout was way down from what it was in 2020. People can speculate about certain things. But I also think there's a genuine part of like they didn't earn people's votes. You know, you look at, uh, let's say, the Palestine people, which think what you will of them, but they are on your side, right? They are generally voters of your party. What did you do? You banned them from the DNC. You thought they didn't matter. And then look at the votes in Dearborn, Michigan, which uh, the, the data right now is showing literally Trump won outright. It looks like he won that Arab Muslim vote in Michigan outright, which went like 88% that precinct for um, Joe Biden back in 2020. That's what happens, right? That's what happens. You ran an arrogant campaign, an arrogant and elitist and total disregard for your own people, even at the very end. What a poetic way to finish the Kamala Harris campaign and her entire political career as a whole. Frankly, okay, Donald Trump shows more regard for people who do not vote for him, <laughs> then Kamala Harris has shown regard for people who did vote for her. So it is what it is, guys. I don't know. I mean, we, we, we can sit here and laugh at it, but part of me feels bad for those people last night. Not, not because like, oh, whatever, but because they did all this to go support a candidate and she can't even go speak. She can't even go speak to them. Just hilarious. OK, though, with that said, we are celebrating content is just getting started, guys. Uh, we have a lot, a lot to talk about, a lot of liberal meltdowns from last night and today that need to be discussed. Stay tuned. That content will be out tonight, tomorrow. It's all coming soon. Uh, but for now, Kamala Harris just conceded again for now. Emphasis on that, because I don't know if that's going to be the case <laughs> in a couple months. <laughs> she's going to she's going to do the Hillary thing. I'm, I'm telling you right now it's coming. Uh, but for now, that's what she did. Leave a like, subscribe if you're new, just getting started. God bless. Orange man, good.
and peace.